<laughs> you may begin. Okay. Hi everybody, my name is Ann Chase and welcome to my TED Talk. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about how social media influences our perceived purpose of nature. Now I know we just settled in this classroom, but if you're like me, you probably are anxious to be outside enjoying the warm weather. So we're going to do that to our, the best of our ability. I invite you all to imagine that you're on your favorite hike, and I want you to pay attention to the scenery, the temperatures, and the smells. And it is a strenuous hike, so you've been hiking for about two and a half hours, and your legs are burning, and your lungs are hurting, but you're almost at the top, so you continue. Why? Tell me, are the extra steps of pain worth a photo? How do the depths of the valleys and the contrast of the peaks below look through your five inch phone screen? You're at the top and from there you can see the whole world. But what does that matter if the world can't see you? We all know why we go outside as a form of recreation, adventure, rejuvenation, but yet we don't feel quite satisfied with the experience until we've taken a photo or 20 photos or posted a story on our Snapchat or our Instagram, right? Personally, I've gotten to the point where I will literally climb up a mountain or wake up at 5 a.m. or drive 40 minutes or do all of the above just so that I can get that perfect photo to post on Instagram. Now part of that is the fact that I love photography. And through the years, I've improved my skills significantly, such as understanding aperture and ISO setting. And quite frankly, I've gotten really, really good at asking other people to take a photo of me. Because <laughs> after all, it's the photos that I post on my Instagram that I'm in that get the most likes, and to me, that's important. Having this sort of dependency on social media and taking photos during experiences has really impacted my outdoor experience. For example, I'll be on a hike with my mom and we'll be walking and all of a sudden I say, Mom, stop! And she'll be like, what's up, honey? Are you out of breath? Do you need to take a break? And I'll be like, no, Mom. I'm fine. I just needed you to take a picture of me like hugging this tree or hanging off the back of it. And we'll continue walking and the we're walking through a beautiful forest and the trees are towering far above my head. And the soil is soft, but I am staring at the screen on my camera, looking at the photos that my mom just took. Mom, stop. We need to try that again because we didn't get a photo that was Instagram worthy. We're humans, and because of that, we are creatures of habit. This means that we tend to fulfill habitual action patterns when the actions that we do fulfill our needs. Abraham Maslow was this um, philosopher who created this pyramid, a five-tier pyramid of our most basic human needs. The first two tiers are physiological needs, such as food, warmth, safety. And the next two tiers are psychological needs, such as a sense of belongingness or love or having a place in society. At the top of the pyramid is a moment of self-actualization or when one achieves their full potential. The two main components of my um, question that I looked into were social media use and outdoor participation. And we participate, or we, yeah, we participate in these activities so frequently and so, and we enjoy them so much because they fulfill our most basic human needs, or our psychological needs. We can take a look at social media. Um, Dar Meshi from the Freie University in Germany discovered that individuals who have who frequently or consistently use social media have a stronger activity in the nucleus accumbens of the brain. This is the region that is associated with reward processing. That is because on social media, we have the ability to always put our best foot forward and receive instant validation and instant gratification that whatever we're doing, and whatever we're posting is good and that we are doing well as human beings. Social media is quickly becoming our preferred way of um, social interaction, access to information, and a form of self-promotion or self-presentation. And it is for that reason that we use and we like to use social media so much. Time in nature is also very beneficial. A study shows that the frontal lobe, which is the part of our brain that is hyper-engaged in modern life, actually deactivates a little bit when we're outdoors. Stronger alpha waves are produced, and alpha waves are particularly strong in people such as monks or meditators. So being in nature actually causes us, uh, 
causes us to have a beneficial neuro neurological reaction, and that is why we enjoy time in nature so much. But we now have a new type of outdoor enthusiast, and that is a social media dependent outdoor enthusiast. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how the overlap of these two activities may cause the benefits of each to cancel each other out or cause negative outcomes. We take photos during experiences in order to document them, or so that we don't forget them. But this photo dependency is actually changing our memory <coughs> function. If you think about it, when you're taking pictures on your phone or your camera, you actually have a lower intake of detail of the experience which mean your, means your brain has less, a less amount of information to remember the experience by. So our brains, rather than defaulting to using tactics such as reminisce and reflection in order to remember the experience, the brain actually automatically defaults to actively seeking out ways to access externalized information. And frequently, that externalized information is digital photo archives. So it's ironic, when we're in nature and we're out doing things and we take pictures to remember the experience, we're only setting ourselves up to forget them. It's important for you to realize that your daily scroll through your Instagram feed is more than just a mere pastime. We have an enormous technological presence in our lives and because of that, the reception of digital trends is extremely powerful. When we see images like when we see idealized or amazing outdoor <coughs> images, which are usually accompanied by an enormous amount of likes, we associate this type of image with successful activity on social media. Because we replicate what we like, we also, what we like and what we view to be successful, we have also started to take photos like these, or attempt to, and um, <coughs> post that on social media. So this has sort of altered the perceived purpose of nature. Is the purpose of an outdoor expedition always to take a photo? No, not always. But, photo, but taking photos is a key component in the validation of that experience. So has this type of perceived purpose of outdoor participation to take a photo altered the types of benefits that one reaps when they're in nature, from a form of pure self-enlightenment and self-betterment to a form of self-promotion and self-presentation. Um, um, Instagram is actually changing the way we travel. This is because we have the ability to instantly discover the location of photos that we view and plan our trips accordingly. But yet this new type of travel is actually changing destinations into mere backdrops. And we are now um, planning our trips based off of the ex photos that we wish to take rather than the experiences that we wish to have. Chris Burkhardt is a professional photographer and a successful Instagram user. And he shared with me his experience of visiting the well-known Horseshoe Bend. He said he literally had to elbow shove his way through the crowd in order to set up his camera to take a photo. And what he captured was a photo that to most of us resembles adventure ecstasy. But perhaps this is fraudulent, because what this photo doesn't show us is the massive crowd of people behind him. What was interesting, though, is that Burkhardt said that in 100 feet in either direction of the overlook, it was empty. He said it started to feel wild again. But yet, Everyone accumulated and crowded in the overlook in order to have the best view to take the best photo. Have we gotten to the point where we will literally sacrifice a meaningful experience in order to take a photo? And even yet, what does that photo value if it simply reflects a digital trend? I was also curious to know how the high visibility of outdoor locations on social media how it impacts the conservation of these areas. 2016 had record high national park visitation. This caused overcrowding in the parking lots, in the canyons, in the overlooks. And to those people who were expecting a peaceful 
and magical experience based off of the photo that they saw on Instagram were quite disappointed and quite frustrated, taking out their frustration on fellow visitors or on the land itself. Park rangers struggle to maintain and conserve the land. We can take Ice Lakes as a local example. With now over 21,000 posts underneath the hashtag Ice Lakes and other related hashtags, and visit Durango, an Instagram page that has 30,000 followers that frequently post photos um, of Ice Lakes, I have personally observed an increased amount of traffic to the area, which that increased amount of traffic results in an even bigger technological presence that Ice Lakes has, causing it to become a tourist, a major tourist attraction. Now, the amount of posts under outdoor related hashtags show that we are just as passionate as ever about the outdoors. But what exactly are we passionate about? Are we passionate about the natural beauty? Are we passionate about the therapeutic effects of nature? Or are we passionate about the fact that we can use social media as a tool of self-promotion and self-presentation on social media? I invite you to consider the following. <coughs> Can we blend an aesthetic that embraces our natural surroundings with technological advancements? I asked you quite a few questions throughout my presentation, questions that I do not yet know the answer to. That is because this is a cutting edge phenomenon that is moving quickly and expansively. Um, and I had to piece together incredibly diverse and past research in order to answer my question. I hope that in the future, more research is conducted, which will lead to more awareness and more insight on the issue. Thank you for joining me today. All right. Thank you, Anne. Um, we're going to open it up for questions from both the audience members and from our panelists. <coughs> so you mentioned uh, several times the uh, difference between the intrinsic value of the beauty of nature versus uh, the value of taking a picture. And I'm wondering, um, from the perspective of the photographer, um, is do you think that the beauty of nature is what is motivating people to take those pictures and post them on Instagram? Or do you think that it's really just because they want to get the likes on Instagram? Um, it's a, I'd say it's a combination of the both. Um, it's hard. So when you're in nature, and obviously it's so beautiful, like it's almost instinctual to want to share that beauty. And um, photographers who, you know, photographers photograph things because they like photography, <coughs> right? But having this new dependency on social media and having it um, have such great rewards for posting beautiful photos, it's um, definitely a big factor um, in the decision of people to take photos while they're in nature. Um, two questions. What kind of further research would you like to see done? Like for you, what are now sort of the big burning questions that if you had another year you could dig into? And then second, what has this done in terms of impacting your own behavior and your own sort of like yeah. process? Um, I think I didn't have any numerical data. Um, so looking all of uh, I think it was really hard. I don't know. Um, more like scientific data and numerical claims that would help make these sort of claims and ideas more valid. Um, and also looking into... Like what kind of data would you like to see? Um, I haven't really thought about that. But. And then how... It's interesting because I've spent the past two and a half months looking into this, pro looking into this topic and I still find myself when I'm on hikes, I still like need to take a photo. 
And um, I recently like <clears throat> asked myself, why do I need to take a photo right now? And sometimes the answer is, this is just so beautiful. I feel like selfish if I keep it to this experience to myself and I want to share it. So there's that aspect of it. Um, but it still in the end comes down to the fact that like, if I can take a good enough photo on a photo, I can um, have like, I don't know, that sort of amount of likes on Instagram still fuels like me taking photos, which is sad, <laughs> and I'm working <laughs> on it, but um, <laughs> it's hard to um, kind of ignore that like strong feeling of reward, you know, when I post a photo, so. Calvin? Um, so, living with you and uh, noticing that <laughs> you're constantly trying to control my Instagram, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get some pictures and some good pictures that we can post on your gram. Um, so, how do you think that Instagram has shaped your passion for um, photography and being out in nature as, like, um, as bringing Murphy or bringing Ben to get that picture with your dog or... Yeah, it's, um, the reason why I was so interested in this topic is because, like, I hate to use the word addicted, <laughs> but I may be addicted to Instagram, or it's like for some people who really like art, or other people that really like sports, it's just like another one of those passions of mine, um, and so I do plan like my day trips or my hikes based off of like which kind of photo I can take. So yeah, it's had a pretty big influence on my decision making. <laughs> Julianne? Um, I guess so, I guess, I don't know how to phrase this, but Instagrams and like social media tend to be like a reflection of like who we are as a person. Like, mine tends to be of like art and musicians I like and yours is like nature. Um, do you see this like, effects like go past like you know like nature and the outdoors you know? absolutely um you know not everyone is an outdoor enthusiast or lives so close to nature um but i think like a s similar conclusions can be drawn about those different types of people that um like their experience of performing or something and having that photo taken validates that experience just a little bit more so yeah, Kyle? So you seem like you're struggling with this tension between like you enjoy taking these pictures and posting them and you feel like maybe it's not a valid use of your time. Yeah. So I'm interested in number one, like is your experience typical and do you have any way to quantify or know that it is? Um, and then just kind of why you're feeling, you're, you're obviously uncomfortable with the way you behave around it in some respects and fine with it in others, and, right. and kind of why you feel that uncomfortable. Okay, um, so I'm not the only one. Um, I'm definitely on the higher end of the spectrum compared to like most of you, um, but there is like a pretty large community of people who are actually making a living off of going into nature and taking these beautiful photos and posting them on Instagram. That is their, that is what they do with their lives. Um, so I'm not there, but um, it definitely, and I only see it become, as Instagram and all these other social media apps become a bigger part of our lives, I only see the, this sort of phenomenon growing. And I think I struggle with it because It's scary to have like your personal experience be so connected to like technology and like some aspects of authenticity and um, like who I want to be, how I want to use my time. Like there's <coughs> tension between the two, and so I'm working on finding my balance, um, making sure that there's still time for like authentic and genuine appreciation of nature and the experience as well as use it, as well as like pursuing my passion of photography. So it's difficult, but yeah. We have time for one more. 
Mm. Choose carefully. <laughs> Hannah. Oh. <Aww. laughs> Bad choice. <laughs> and when somebody is scrolling through your Instagram page, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Someone's going through your Instagram page and they like one of your pictures, what are they liking? There's a lot of things to like, right? They can right. like the color, they can like what you're doing, they right. can, are they happy for you? There's what, what goes into a like on Instagram? Um, so the pictures, like I said, the pictures that I post that I'm in usually get more likes. Um, and I think that's because like viewers have that automatic like connection to like me. Um, They may like the activity that I'm doing, or how beautiful the photo is, or um, or if they just want to like my photo to be nice. Um, <laughs> so it's a whole combination. Like, pity, like. A pity-like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that exists too. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. All right. Thank you, Anne. Step outside.